This week I had a goal to create two highly sellable, low cost CNC products that have the potential to sell for huge profits. This is the first video in a two part mini series about these projects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed and manufactured these projects. And then in the next video, which will be next week, uh, I'm gonna show you how to sell them, how to price them, what I have into them, why these particular items um, I believe can have huge profits. And uh, so that video will be out next week. The files I used to make these projects, I created in Vectrix software. And all those files are available for free to download on Vectrix website. All that information will be linked in the description below. So let's get right into this first project, which is this kids coin sorting tray. This is a really neat project to teach kids about the value of money. Uh, you can sort different coins and uh, they can learn the value, the name, uh, and what the front and backs look like. It's important to note that I designed mine with coins commonly found in the United States. But with the Vectric file, this is really easy to change the name, value, and the diameter um, of the coin slots. So this is completely customizable if you want to uh, use it for different coins. Using Vectric, I set my stock dimensions to 16 inches by 12 inches by 3 quarters of an inch. This is slightly larger than the final dimensions of the coin tray, which are approximately 14 inches by 10 inches. This is so I have room for the screws that I'll be using for my work holding. I made mine out of cherry hardwood, but this could easily be made out of another hardwood, uh, pine, or even three quarter inch plywood would work well here as well. So in the design, after getting all of my pockets laid out, I went to Google to find the diameters of each of the coins that I would be using so I could make their pockets. I added three thousandths to the diameter of each coin so I had enough room to get them in and room for the glue. I used a total of three bits for this project, and they're all super common. A quarter inch down cut bit, a 60 degree V groove bit, and a three quarter inch bowl and tray bit. If you're needing these bits to complete this project, I actually sell them on my website. So I'll leave a link in the description if that's something that you need. All right, so let's go over the tool paths a little bit and how I've got them laid out. The first tool path is a V carving tool path that uses the V bit to carve the text. The second tool path is a pocketing tool path using the bowl and tray bit. This will pocket out all the individual coin sorting uh, trays within the larger tray. You could use the down cut bit here, but I really like the quarter inch radius that the bowl and tray bit has on the bottom of it, and it leaves at the bottom of the pocket. I think it gives it a nice look, but it also makes it easier to get the coins out of the trays. The third tool path is another pocketing tool path, but I'm using the down cut bit here for the coin slots. For the fourth and final tool path, I'm using the same down cut bit and a profile tool path that cuts the outer profile of the tray. All right, so here you have it, a coin sorting board. I'm really happy with how it came out. Oh, there's one thing that I consider doing and one thing that I still need to do. I still need to glue the coins in here just so they don't fall out. So as um, my son is flopping this around, there's not coins laying around. I think it's a good idea. And then they have a visual uh, of the front and back of a coin and it's just in there, just a little dab of glue. Uh, and then the other thing I consider doing is I considered filling the text uh, here. And although I like this look, I think we can get it to pop a little bit more. And a couple thoughts to do that is one, fill it with an epoxy or like a colored CA glue and then sand it flat. Uh, the other thing that I thought that you could do is paint it. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, one thing, if you are gonna paint it or putting, if you're gonna fill it at all, um, I recommend putting a clear coat first so it doesn't bleed into these edges so you can get nice crisp edges. Um, and the reason I thought about doing that is one, it's just hard to keep these clean. Kids are dirty. And so uh, if this was flat, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, drool or crumbs or whatever getting into this and it would make it stand, stand out more. But uh, I think I'm gonna leave it this way um, for now and see how it goes but I'm really happy with how that turned out. The second project that I came up with was this round box with a textured removable lid. So this box is pretty elegant. So I see it being used as a jewelry 
box. I made it out of walnut, which looks fabulous as well. And I can picture this storing necklaces and jewelry and rings, uh, sitting on a bedside table or sitting on a bathroom vanity or sitting on a chest of drawers. Uh, that's kind of how I picture this being used. But there are other ideas too. This could be used as like a salt cellar. Or another idea I had is you could be the talk of the next taco party that you go to when you show up with your miniature tortillas in the coolest tortilla storage container ever. The size of stock that I'm starting with is 14 inches by eight inches by three quarters of an inch. The overall dimensions of the box are six by six. So this will fit inside that size. This is a two-sided carve. So I selected that in the setup and then I selected the direction I'll flip my workpiece. Whatever you select here is important to remember when it's time to flip your workpiece and that's how you get everything to line up. There are a total of six tool paths for this project, three for the front and three for the back. But this project only uses a total of two bits, the same quarter inch down cut bit as the previous project and a quarter inch ball nose bit. For this project, most of the tool paths are pocketing tool paths for various depths. But I wanna highlight two other features of this project. The first one being how we got the texture on top of the lid and the second, is how we get everything to line up on a two-sided carve. First, let's focus on the texture. The texture is machined on the top of the stock, the first side. I created this texture using a texturing toolpath in Vectric. So this isn't a 3D model, rather a toolpath that generates this pattern based on a few input parameters. So one other important thing to note here is I actually removed some of the stock from the top, meaning since I'm carving the top and bottom out of the same stock thickness, but I wanted them to be a different thickness, final thickness, I had to remove some from the top uh, that will be the lid and then do the texturing. So what I did is add a pocketing tool path to remove some of the material from the top before the texturing tool path. Then I set the texturing tool path to start at the bottom of that pocket. The second unique feature of this project is that it requires two-sided machining. This is where I'll machine one side, flip my workpiece over, and machine the other side. So in this case, the top, the first side I machine, is the top of the tray, where I do the texturing. Then I'll flip it over and machine all the pockets on side two, which is the bottom. The key to the two-sided machining is to make sure everything lines up perfectly. To do this, I'm machining these locating dowel holes through my stock and into my wasteboard. So by going through my entire profile and then into my wasteboard, I know that those holes are lined up. And then I also set these holes on to be on the center of my stock. So as an example, here is uh, my stock. I machine the top. Here's the uh, dowel holes and they're perfect. They're laid out perfectly in the center. These are laid out and the spacings laid out ap appropriately. And so when I machine this side, I flip it over. So since I have those holes through, I can drive dowels in this side into the wasteboard and I know everything is perfectly lined up. Like from like this to like this. So there you have it, a fancy box with a textured lid and the lid sits on there perfectly and that texture looks really, really cool too. So overall this took about 45 minutes to machine and with about half of that time being the texture. One small issue I ran into were the tabs on the lid. Since I machined it this way and then flipped it and I removed stock on the top and then I flipped it and I did the profile pass on this side uh, my tabs typically would be, would be at the bottom, right? They would be down here. Uh, they're usually on your work surface. There's no material there to, to attach to. So what I had to do is I had to thicken the tabs. You can control the thickness. They were a quarter inch. I went up to a half inch and that way everything stayed in place and there was still enough meat there um, to grab. So which project is your favorite? If I had to pick between the two of them, I believe I would pick the textured jewelry box. I just love that texture. 
So let me know down in the comments below which one is your favorite. Remember that these files are available for free on Vectrix website. Along with the bits that you need, they will be available on my website. All that information is linked below. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to sell these two projects. Remember, low cost, high profit. That's what I was going for here, and that's what we're going to talk about in next week's video, a week from today. So you get notified when that video comes out. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification uh, because you're not going to want to miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.